We continue with expectation ahead of the medium-term budget policy statement to be delivered tomorrow by Finance Minister Inoko Dungwan at 2 p.m. We're joined this hour by political economist Dr. Lumki Lemondi. Good evening, Doctor. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. So, Doctor, before we get to what you expect to hear from the Minister, let's start with just the role of the medium-term budget policy statement in the overall budget process, which is then delivered, of course, in February. Talk us through this specific uh, policy statement's role. This policy statement, uh, the medium-term budget policy statement, uh, is very critical uh, to investors and uh, to South Africans at large, giving us a three-year expectation on what government's priorities are going to be and giving us in figures the usual spend uh, in various areas, uh, whether it's uh, the social side of our uh, of our economy, or as well as the capital investment side of our economy. So in that, in doing so, it signals uh, to the financial markets how much government will be borrowing uh, in those markets, uh, both domestically and internationally, therefore enabling many actors in the economy to act decisively uh, in line with their expectation in the next three years. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you add the budget and then relate that to, the, to our other function in relation to the Reserve Bank, which is inflation targeting. So both this medium term budget expenditure and inflation, inflation targeting policy, the two of them indicate to us uh, and, the, and the broader society and international investors how South Africa is managing its resources uh, going forward, mm -hmm. creating certainty, creating credibility, and enabling South Africa uh, to be an investor-friendly country. Mm -hmm. And I suppose also giving us an indication of the key priority areas. But then to your expectations. This policy statement comes against a backdrop of a meaningful moderation in inflation as well as interest rate cuts. But South Africa's debt is still elevated at 75% of the GDP. So what do you expect to hear? So I'm expecting that uh, firstly there's going to be an expectation of a better economic improvement. We know that the two-part system has given people a lot of money. Uh, secondly, in doing so, has given also government a lot of money, given yes. the decision that mm. comes through. So expenditure has grown. Uh, I'm sure the next figures we saw on we see on retail expenditure in the next few weeks will show to us how much is being spent at retail level. Uh, we saw uh, the past few days from the pick and pay, uh, Mr. Summers. Uh, indicating to us that there's an improvement in pick and pay uh, in terms of the sales. So therefore, I think a lot of it is coming also from this uh, uh, two-part system. Mm. So better economic growth, uh, which is important, higher revenue, and therefore giving government uh, some breathing space in terms of expenditure, particularly in capital investment, because most of our infrastructure is falling apart. So I think it's going to a message of saying, look, um, there is really uh, green shoots, and these green shoots are, are domestically driven. Given that internationally we're expecting a, a very, uh, a, a very uh, muted economic growth of about 3.2 mm -hmm. percent, according to the IMF, and therefore domestically we need to use this space to invest in infrastructure, creating opportunities for business so that they can lower their cost of business and employ people mm. and, and have better expectation for the next three years. Doctor, when we look at these green shoots, we hear that they could be short-lived if we're going to at least confine ourselves to the two-pot system, that we've seen the surge right now in applications. There was 21 billion. We've even spoken to SARS Commissioner Edward Keatswetter, but they're saying it will taper down. At some point, it will settle down. We won't see that surge anymore. So what becomes of just this almost short-lived green shoot? Do you mean that they need to strategically invest this kind of revenue now in all the right places? That's, what, that's exactly what's going to be happening. So I'm expecting that they gave us something which are expanding. In return, they took some, which I hope is going to go to uh, capital investment, mainly infrastructure, water, roads, rail, as well as electricity, uh, particularly the transmission part of electricity. Those are going to be the engines that will sustain further economic growth. So this year, we're expecting an improvement of between 1.3 and 1.8 in, 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 in this year, uh, driven by the, the surge uh, in the consumer expenditure, but also government expenditure. Next year, 
possibly should do better about 2.2 percent uh, as our capacity improves uh, and the economy hopefully uh, improves globally as there's war settlement taking place particularly after the elections next week in the u.s we hope that peace is going to be the core focus of the new American government. And therefore, a true a global peaceful environment, uh, which will hopefully will drive it to international growth and therefore allow our economy also to be lifted by positive international economic development. Mm, so essentially, we need to make hay while the sun is still out. But how much of an impact, honestly, will the recent shift in fiscal strategy driven by the ongoing reforms and the political landscape have on projections of uh, growth in the economy? I mean, what is done, this, this uh, journey, what is done, is brought back a belief that South Africa can do it. It's brought back many skeptics who thought that we're going to go, going to go down the other route uh, of, of a bust, as we've seen with many post-colonial African countries. And thirdly, it's allowing us to implement many reforms. I think one of them relates to uh, us being registered. And I think... The minister is going to talk a bit about it, that we're hopeful that in the first quarter of next year, uh, we may be lifted because government has done quite a lot, but largely in terms of the financial se uh, sector as a whole, the central bank uh, tightening some of the uh, leakages that were there, but also we're seeing a huge improvement uh, in terms of police and uh, really making sure that any illicit flow that's coming in is being monitored and they're closing in on monitoring criminal syndicates. So all the signs are positive and we need just a relaxation from the general community so that it can allow our government to do more and do better. And in doing so, fully bring us and move us up for breathing agency towards invest investment rating and allowing us to borrow cheaply so that you can borrow more uh, to invest domestically and create mm -hmm. opportunities for South Africans, keeping the high levels of unemployment in our country. Now, still on the structural reforms, uh, sp specifically focusing now on Operation Vulindlela, according to yes. you, do you think it's been able to sufficiently remove some of the blockages in the network industries? Absolutely. I mean, the gains that we've been talking to on the transport logistics, uh, many of your viewers will remember that we didn't have parts for some of the locomotives that we had brought from China. Mm. And through Operation of Lila, by bringing private sector players and capabilities and capacities in the private sector, we're able to, uh, to make an, uh, those, those parts uh, and get many of the recruits back on, uh, on the rail. So, uh, a lot of improvements. On the commuter side, with Prasa uh, doing its job very, very well, uh, we, we've got uh, over 120 days of uh, no load sharing. Um, and more importantly also, uh, the core focus now should be on how we can harvest more water, given the rains that we'll be getting in summer, according to meteorologists, uh, by building dams and ensuring that we invest on an infrastructure for water and storage facilities, uh, because with climate change, we are likely to have longer drought. Therefore, we need to be ready by investing now in creating uh, more uh, storage facilities and fixing our water infrastructure uh, mm. because we're lagging behind. Particularly with the uh, Lesotho Highland Water Project, we must get it going very, very fast to mm -hmm. ensure that we can have storage. Uh, so that as the economy grows, we don't have uh, we move from a sea problem and a real problem into a water problem. Mm -hmm. And then, Doctor, just in closing, there's anticipation of a potential announcement on social spending and possibly extending the COVID-19 relief grant or transforming it into a more permanent social support structure. Do you expect such at this point? We're, we're expecting that because uh, it's important for South Africa to ensure that. Uh, the high unemployment levels that we see in South Africa does at least give some form of income. And we have seen that uh, uh, through the, the relief that was provided for government of 350, that's gone a long way. And in fact, uh, the Institute for Economic Justice has gone to court uh, uh, to try and force government to do so uh, in terms of all the equality, equality rights. Uh, and ensuring that people have access to basic services. So I'm hoping that there will be announcements around that and government can share with us how we're going to be able to make it uh, and fund it sustainable uh, in the medium to long term. It's a critical part of a country like ours with high levels of unemployment and high levels of poverty that at least will provide some support for basic services for, for, many, for many people through a basic income.
All right, Doctor, thank you very much as always for your insights. That was political economist Dr. Lumkile Mondi.